The fighting in Ukraine continues after Ukraine rejected Vladimir Putin's call for a temporary ceasefire for Russian Orthodox Christmas, which is celebrated today. There were new attacks in the Donetsk and Dnipropetrovsk regions after the Russian president said that he would pause fighting on Friday into Saturday to allow Orthodox Christians to attend Christmas services. Now, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, he called the proposal a, quote, manipulation as he met with two U.S. senators in Kyiv, he said that Moscow wants to use Christmas as a cover to pause advances by Ukrainian troops and bring in more men and equipment for the Russian side. Joining us now to discuss this and more is retired uh, uh, Army Major General uh, James Spider Marks. He is a CNN military analyst and a head of geopolitical strategy at Academy Securities. General Marks, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I want to start with that proposed 36-hour Christmas ceasefire that proposal made by Russia, of course. Do you agree with Ukrainian and, and Western officials that call this a ploy, a, a PR stunt, and a, a tactical move by the Russian president? Yeah, yes, I do, Alex. I mean, let's, let's be frank. It's very easy to be cynical about what Putin says and then what Putin is going to do. Um, but what's interesting is that in the history of warfare, it, it's not unusual to have these Christmas temporary ceasefires uh, giving both sides an opportunity to rest. But Really, during this period, is you can rest, you can refit, you can reposition, which is clearly what the, the Russians are doing right now. So it, it's, it's an honest assessment to be a tad cynical about what Putin said he wanted to try to achieve with this temporary ceasefire. Yeah, rest would certainly benefit the Russians who've been on their heels for, for quite some time now. Uh, General, I want to ask you about this huge new aid package, almost $3 billion in, in direct aid to the Ukrainian military. And it now includes for the first time the 50 armored combat vehicles known as Bradley Fighting Vehicles. These are not quite tanks, which of course Ukrainians have been asking for for a long time. But how do you expect that these uh, Bradley Fighting Vehicles and the other armored vehicles that other allies are sending to Ukraine, how is that going to impact the fight? Well, it's quite a significant uh, enhancement in terms of the Ukrainian ground forces being able to achieve a level of maneuver. Now, there's a difference between mobility and maneuver, and we don't need to get into that type of inside baseball discussion. But maneuver allows forces to eat up large swaths of terrain, but it, they need to be used. This maneuverability is achieved through a combination of ground capabilities air capabilities, long distance, you know, deep fires, great intelligence, all of this needs to be synchronized. So a single piece of equipment like the Bradleys is wonderful, but it needs to be used in conjunction with all those other enablers. And so the key is, are the Ukrainians prepared to inject this type of capability and achieve that level of maneuverability, which really puts them at a great advantage over the Russians? Because every time, tactically, when the Russians and the Ukrainians engage, the Russians lose. They get slaughtered. So they don't, they, the Russians, don't want to see this great maneuverability on the part of the Ukrainians, but it needs to be achieved with all those other capabilities as well. So it's a, it's a plus up, but it remains to be seen. We have seen this general escalation of the systems that are being sent by the U.S. and other NATO allies to Ukraine over the course of this war. Um, in response to Ukraine asking for tanks, U.S. officials have said that they, at least the American tanks, require a lot of training, a lot of maintenance. We're now seeing France, however, announcing that it's going to be sending some, some light tanks. Obviously, there's some German light tanks that the Ukrainians also want to get their, their hands on. So do you think we're getting in closer, we're inching closer with these Bradleys uh, to those Western allies sending tanks to Ukraine? Yes, absolutely. But, you know, some of the restrictions, Alex, need to be removed. You've indicated that we don't want HIMARS, those long-range fires, very precise fires. We give them the missiles that only go out to 40 miles. We have missiles that could take them out to almost 190 miles, 300 kilometers. Um, we've told them not to strike across the border. Of course, that is the border into Russia. Of course, that have taken place. So you don't need to have these artificialities placed on these capabilities. You want to kind of let them loose with the right type of training to achieve those maximum results. At the end of the day, the Ukrainians have acknowledged they're going to end up with a hodgepodge, kind of a cat's breakfast of all these different type of capabilities. That's not ideal. But when you're looking for these types of enablers and you've got nations that are willing to step up and say, I'll provide you X or I'll provide you Y, understand you're going to have a whole bunch of maintenance problems. 
because you've got to keep these things. And in many cases with tanks and Bradleys, you end up with um, their fuel hogs. Can you maintain them? Are you going to have these pieces of capabilities, great, this great kit, end up at the end of a, of a particular operation where they can't maneuver anymore because they're running out of fuel. These are considerations that the Ukrainians are aware of. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. What I'm saying is these are the things that are on the board that will be addressed and are being addressed right now. That's what warfare is all about. Look, people talk about mm -hmm. tacticians warfare. This is all about logistics right. in order to support this type of operation. And what we continue to hear from the Ukrainians is, is thank you for all of this, but we still need more in order to defeat uh, the Russians. Uh, retired Army Major General Spider Marks, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Appreciate it.